It's time once again for Uncle Matt's bedtime story. Hello, everybody. It's Uncle Matt, and I'm here to read you another bedtime story. And Gung Hei Fat Choi. That's right. It's Chinese New Year. And uh, we'd like to read you another story here at Uncle Matt's Bedtime Story. Yesterday, we had a Chinese New Year story as well. Today, we're going to do the same. And it's called Amy Wu and the Perfect Bow. I don't know about you, but I love bows. In fact, I got some right here. This is uh, one of my favorites. It's a miniature pineapple bun, pineapple bow. And um, this one here, oh, this one I could eat right now. A little squished. It is a barbecue pork bun. Cha su bao. Mmm. There's some pork in there. Really tasty. My producer says I should stop eating and um, get to the story. There's some good, mmm, that's so good. The cha su bao, the bigger bao, the bigger one that I had, also comes in a white colored format. The the one I show, I'll show you again. I'm not going to try to take another bite though. This one is uh, found in uh, Chinese bakeries. And the white bao, the white cha su bao, pineapple, or uh, barbecue pork bun, is found in like dim sum restaurants. So, without... Further ado, oh, in the back here, there's a translation on bao before I do that. One or more Chinese steam bun with savory or sweet filling. And uh, the bao I'm having is kind of sweet. Let's get to it. Amy Wu and the Perfect Bao. By Kat Zhang, illustrated by Charlene Shua. And uh, this story was copyright in... 2019. Here we go. Bow, like bow, not bow, okay? There's a little note here from the author, because the author grew up in a Mandarin-speaking family. I grew up in a Cantonese-speaking family, and in Mandarin, I guess it's baozi, uh, instead of bow and, and pronounce the word differently, but the Americanized pronunciation is usually bow. And in Canada, that's what we usually say too is bow. Okay, let's get to the story so I can have more of my bow. All right. Amy can do a lot of things. She can brush her teeth. She can tie her shoe. She can even do both at once. Well, sort of. But there's one thing Amy cannot, cannot do. She cannot make the perfect bow, nor can I. Sometimes they come out too small. Sometimes they come out too big. Sometimes she adds too much filling, sometimes not enough. And sometimes they fall apart before they reach her mouth. Amy's mom and dad make a perfect bow. So does her grandma. Their bow are soft and fluffy and so, so delicious. Amy could eat them all day and sometimes she does. Today, Amy is going to do it. She's going to make the world's most perfect bow. Bow making is an all day event. Amy's dad starts in the morning mixing together the ingredients for the dough. Then it's time to knead, knead, knead. He pushes the dough. He punches the dough. Amy gives it a try, too. They leave the dough to rise. Amy keeps an eye on it just in case it grows bigger and bigger and bigger. Amy's dad squishes the dough down just in time. He rolls it into a log and cuts it into pieces. Meanwhile, Amy's mom seasons meat for the filling. 
Looks like they're using garlic and mushrooms and pepper and salt and ginger. Everyone gathers around the table and rolls up their sleeves. It's time to get to work. Amy's first bow turns out a little funny. So does the second. It's hard to know how much filling to add. Too little and the bow is sad and empty. Too much and oops. The cat's pretty happy though. It's also hard to pinch the bow shut just right. Amy watches her mom make a perfect bow. She watches her dad make a perfect bow and her grandma too. They all try to teach her. Roll out the dough like this, says Amy's dad. Use just enough filling, says Amy's mom. Pinch, 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 says Amy's grandma. But Amy's bow just aren't the same. They are too empty or too fat. They have holes in them, they leak. Maybe today won't be the day after all. Maybe Amy just can't make a perfect bow. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Then Amy has an idea. The pieces of dough were cut for grown-up hands, but Amy's hands are very small. She whispers her idea into her grandma's ear. Amy's grandma cuts each piece of dough into two smaller pieces. Amy size pieces. Now they fit perfectly in Amy's palms. Carefully, Amy rolls the dough so it's thicker on the inside and thinner at the edges. She adds just the right amount of filling. She pinch, pinch, pinches it shut. And there it is, Amy's perfect bow. She did it. She makes another, and another, and even more after that. She is a bow-making master. Soon all the dough and filling are gone. Everyone is tired, but they're not done yet. Amy's grandma boils a big pot of water. It's time to steam the bow. Hmm. Not sure if Amy knows how to read. Look what she's reading. It's kind of upside down. A little bit. Amy keeps an eye on the steamer just in case. All her perfect bow and all the imperfect ones too are snug inside. The bow are done. Amy's mom lifts the lid of the steamer. Whoosh! Out comes a puff of steam. Amy can't see anything at all. The steam clears. There are Amy's perfect bow. They are not too small, they are not too big, they have just the right amount of filling, and they do not leak. They are soft and fluffy and oh so delicious. Amy eats one, then another, then eats one of the not-so-perfect bow, and you know what? It tastes just as good. Oh, what's going on here? Looks like Amy is giving away some of her perfect bow to her classmates. All right, the end. There is some instructions here on how to make Amy's bow. It's a family, family recipe, it makes about 20. You can screenshot that if you're interested. And that is the end. Wow, that makes me wanna finish my bow. Well, once again, gong hei fa choi, happy Chinese New Year. That's all the time we have for Uncle Matt's bedtime story. I hope you enjoyed that story, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.